Hi everybody and welcome to today's videos where today we're going to be discussing whether there's going to be a recession in 2022 and 2023. But before we get to the video, I just thought I'd mention if you're a property developer or an investor or a property professional or indeed somebody involved in a property renovation, please get in touch with us because we'd love to do a video with you to discuss your views as to how the property market is affecting you and your business and what your views are on things going forward. But today, of course, we're here to talk about whether there's going to be a recession in 2022, 2023. There are differing views. Some people are saying that the rising cost of fuel, energy, etc., is going to lead to a recession, that the war in the Ukraine, which unfortunately is still continuing, is going to cause supply chain issues in, up to and including food shortages. But the question is, is, is that enough to tip the world into recession? We're coming out of the end of a two-year global pandemic where world manufacturing was, to one degree or another, shut down. We've had Chip Mageddon in the car industry where, because of a semiconductor plant fire, and slowly we're seeing supply chains globally returning to their normal levels. What we are seeing, however, is rising fuel costs caused by uh, the war in the Ukraine and a general increase in the demand for oil. And we're also starting to see that feed through into retail inflation. What does that mean for people's spending power? Well, logically you would say people are going to have less to spend on things and as a result they may cut back on their activity. But does that actually constitute a recession? Are we going to see cuts in global manufacturing capacity as a result of a collapse in demand? Are we going to see a lack of liquidity in capital markets and thereby money supply restricting people's ability to spend? Well, I actually don't think we are. I think we've got a few bumps in the road. We've got adjustments that are coming out, not only because of the pandemic, not only because of the war in the Ukraine, but also because of structural changes in the UK labour market caused by Brexit. We no longer have access to a limitless free flow of labour from Europe. And so in certain sectors, wages are actually rising faster than inflation and that knocks on into prices. But generally, wages are currently rising above the rate of inflation. Interest rates, even despite the latest hike to 1%, are still running below the rate of inflation. So in real terms, we aren't yet into a recession. We can't really talk about predicting a recession without predicting the outcome of the Ukraine war. Why? Because at the present moment it could go in one of possibly three directions. The war could stalemate, but it could simply continue for a long time and that will lead to Western governments and indeed every party involved spending a lot more money on weapons, which is not something you get a payback on. And that ultimately will feed through into government borrowing and that may have an impact on interest rates. Similarly, we could see the war turn hotter and more into a more general war in Europe, at which point discussion of a recession seems almost pointless. But I think that's a highly remote possibility. And the third one is, is that Russia ultimately will lose the war. And that not only is probably a good thing for the people of the Ukraine, but also will have certain medium-term economic consequences for Russia and for Western Europe and indeed the rest of the world. But what will this mean economically? Well, there's currently sufficient oil and gas supply outside of Russia to take up and replace their supply if Europe stops buying it. it. will take time, it's another structural adjustment, pipelines will have to be moved, stuff will have to be shipped which will make it more expensive, but we can adjust to that. Similarly, Ukrainian food production and their grain production is very important to keeping the price of wheat low and everything that wheat is made from will eventually be restored. We may have a short-term shortage, but ultimately over the course of the next one, two years, the global market will rebalance. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of uncertainty and instability. We're more likely to see inflation than we are recession. And ultimately, for reasons that I can't go into here, I believe that the world economy will emerge from the next 18 months significantly restructured and able to resist and be more resilient to the kinds of 
natural and unnatural disasters that we've seen over the last two years. We're going to do another video on that subject because there are a number of wide-scale macroeconomic topics that could be discussed and uh, I promised not to make it too scientific but I think it's worthy of a more detailed discussion. During these uncertain times it's little appreciated that up to one in five of all stamp duty returns are overpayments and that up to 70% of those overpayments are, could be valid reclaims from HMRC. In Cornerstone and Stamp Duty Refunds, we specialise in identifying these and making sure that you get your money back from HMRC. Please remember, if you like the video, click like, click subscribe to receive further updates, and we'll be talking to you soon. I've been David Hanna for Cornerstone Tax. Thanks for listening.